Welcome to the lesson on the endocrine system. In this lesson, we'll talk about how the endocrine system operates, what hormones are, and the difference between hypersecretions and hyposecretions of hormones. And we'll also be labeling a diagram in your blue workbook showing the various glands of the endocrine system. So imagine if you're riding an exercise bike which keeps track of your heart rate and the number of times you pedal per minute. Suppose you tried to keep your heart rate equal to your pedaling rate. What would happen? Well, as your heart rate rises, your pedaling rate would have to go up. Both would continue to rise until you either gave up or passed out. So what would be a smarter way to do it? Watch your heart rate. If it gets too high, slow down your pedaling rate. This is called negative feedback and is the way almost every hormone in your body works. The other approach we mentioned in the first bullet is called positive feedback. And this causes the system to go out of control. A couple other examples you may be familiar with that are negative feedback systems are thermostats that control the temperature in your house or in your classroom, and the accelerator, the pedal speedometer of a car, at least when driven by a responsible driver. The endocrine system is a system of glands which produce chemical messengers called hormones, which then affect target tissues. Hormones regulate metabolism, growth, and reproduction. Disorders of the endocrine system are either hypersecretions, which means producing too much of a hormone, or hyposecretions, producing too little of a hormone. Hypersecretions are more difficult to treat than hyposecretions, as it's easier to add missing hormone than it is to take out an excess hormone. However, dosages and hyposecretions can be difficult to manage as hormones are usually present in extremely small quantities anyway. The entire secretion of the pituitary gland, for example, over a person's life in the form of pure, actual purified hormone would amount to about a teaspoonful to give you perspective on how small the quantities are. Um, of hormones that are present in your body. Okay, next let's take a look at this diagram that's in your blue book. If you don't have your blue book, go grab it real quick. Pause the video and come right back and we're going to label these glands of the endocrine system. We start with number one, which is called the pineal gland. Obviously located in the center of your brain. On the underside of your brain, we have a gland called the hypothalamus. Now, I think we labeled that in our brain diagram in the nervous system unit earlier. Right below the hypothalamus is the pituitary gland. Number four is your thyroid gland, located in your throat. Number five are the parathyroid glands. You can see the little dots there on the, um, on the thyroid gland itself. By the way, in case you haven't figured this out, the diagram on the left is the female, and the diagram on the right is the male. Number six is the thymus. We talked about that gland earlier in the course. Number seven are the adrenal glands, which are on top of your kidneys. Number eight is the pancreas, which we mentioned in our digestive system unit. Number nine in the female are the ovaries. And number 10 in the male are the testicles. Okay, more to come on all of those, more to come on all these glands. Um, what they produce and what disorders can take place in each of these glands in a later lesson. All right, that'll do it for our notes, uh, note-taking session for this lesson. Um, now let's take a look at another video, which will go more in-depth 
on the function of the endocrine system.